So good morning, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Um, Monica launched the book, right, She Rose, and I'm very honored and privileged to be one of the authors, and I have one of the chapter there in the book. And uh, I decided when I got invited to be in this forum to just read my chapter to you. So, a la Carrie Bradshaw. <laughs> She's my idol, so I'll just um, read my chapter, and hopefully um, you'll get interested to buy, and so you can read the 14 other chapters that comprise the book. So please bear with me. I'll try to read as fast as I can with a bit of emotion so you won't get bored, okay? So here it goes. So if I had pronounced, actually, my nickname right when I was a child, I would have been known as a fictional blue tang and one of the major characters in the animated film series Finding Nemo. My nickname could have been Dory. But I can only pronounce vowels. So it ended as I. Unlike Dory, who suffered from shorter memory loss, but was known for her childlike optimism and ability to communicate in different languages, IE is about courage, grit, and purpose. If I were to write a straightforward story of my life, the simplest version might go like this. My name is IE Campos. I am a people leader for 24, 27 years actually. 24 years were spent in the IT BPM space. I am a licensed medical technologist. I am a mother to beautiful children, Luis and Patricia, and a wife to my husband, Leo. I should say handsome husband, Leo. And I saw opportunities coming my way Doors opened, first one, then another, and I walked through them. By having my story told in one of the chapters in this book, I will share the lessons that have helped me live a sentient life. It will be segmented and overlapping at the same time into three chapters. Explorer, like Dora, Builder, and a Navigator. Each chapter inspired me to face the challenges over the years and gave me a deeper understanding of myself and the world around me. So as an explorer, our family has a strong bond. I am the eldest of two siblings. My mother is a dedicated homemaker and my father is an accountant. My father wanted me to become a doctor. His opinion mattered. That's why I took up medical technology. It was, an in, it was an aspiration for parents during my time to see their children carry a title. In my case, a prefix with the letters DNR would have been the ultimate dream. But in the same way I mispronounced my supposed nickname and missed the consonants in it, my father's dream of seeing his daughter become a doctor didn't become a reality. It is almost impossible to explain how our life went <clears throat> because of a major financial crisis which led to us selling our house. This was followed by my father getting ill. He suffered a stroke, almost died, stayed in hospital, for over a month and was bedridden for 14 years. This made my brother, my mother, me, and especially my father feel helpless <clears throat> and defenseless. My mom leveraged her excellent cooking skills, delivering meals for friends and relatives while I sold street food in front of our very small apartment. All the while, while taking care of my father. I have always been 
an intuitive person. So knowing that there is competition selling the same products along the street, I concocted a secret sauce for our fish balls, squid balls, and kikiam, and we would always sell faster than others. My brother, on the other hand, left the seminary for an opportunity to work in the U.S. so he could help support our father. Around that time, I remember having the strangest feeling. Life was telling me something, and the message was actually very clear. It was a wake-up call as to whether I wanted to see what life had to offer, or I could hop back on the hamster wheel. My new focus was to pronounce all the vowels and consonants and make a conscious effort to change the conversations in my head. Even today, I do this over and over again. Every single day, I meditate and pray. I was seized by the thought that we all need protection. I also knew that my next steps would affect me and my family directly. My family has been my anchor and my safe space. I can't let them down. Somehow, although I didn't know how, I knew, but I knew I had to find a way. So I prayed for clarity of mind, strength, and guidance to find my purpose and my next steps. I asked to be shown the way. One day, I got an answer from a friend, a customer service role at a local telecommunications company. At the time, I wasn't sure if it was the right answer. All I said was, thank you. My prayer was heard, and I was shown a path to take. Life is magical. Being a medical technologist in a customer service world, maybe, is the perfect failure equation, but who knows? But truly, I was happy to be there. In 1994, as a contractual opera telephone operator in a conglomerate, I could finally say that I had a place in this world. It certainly wasn't a straight shot, but I was getting started. Every day was hectic at work. When I think about my daily schedule, I realize that almost every day felt like a ritual, and I really wanted to create something new for myself. I may have finished my task for the day, but I would always check for new opportunities to learn. So I would speak to my direct supervisor to mentor me and work on additional projects. After three months, I was promoted on a probationary status as a department clerk secretary to the manager of customer service. Navigating the corporate world was unlike the medical laboratory I had become used to. In the laboratory, I was the one in control of analyzing a variety of biological uh, you know, specimens. Now, it felt like I was the one being examined and watched, evaluated. Sitting in silence, I asked myself, is this really the job my father would have wanted me to have? In my mind, my father would have already given me the answer. He used to tell me, always take a leap of faith. This job in a, is an answered prayer, and I knew that my father, being the nurturer that he was, whispered to the Almighty to make the situation an opportunity to which I could thrive. As a department secretary, I had to do tasks that I had zero knowledge and had not experienced in my life. Take, for example, using a computer Project management, understanding financials, and speaking the English language fluently. But I had to do all of them or else I would fail myself and my family. I needed the discipline to learn, and having the discipline isn't always easy. And, that, and what is the best way to start? To have self-awareness. It's still a long part, but I will jump to the next part. So... 
that's the start of the explorer chapter or portion. Now I'll go to the builder. So everything starts as a dream. But first, you need to know what your dream is and why you want it. I have always wanted to become a people manager. I developed my work ethic by sharing a small house with my mother, brother, and father. We were a very small family. Watch my parents work as hard as they did was definitely helpful. Being the eldest and losing my father, I became disciplined, courageous, and receptive. That's why it was easy for me to be strong inside and be adaptive to the energy of the people around me, which I believe would make me a good people manager. After being in this first company, the local telco company, for almost four years, I moved to a global telecommunications company as a junior manager. I was responsible for setting up hotline operations, but after two months in that role, I was moved to set up another department and lead a new department called Fulfillment Operations. I built the team and process from ground up. I was sent to the U.S. for training since the role was new in country. The next challenges became a little harder, but I knew I had to rise to meet them, every single one of them. The next was much harder than the other. This helped me develop patience, and it gave me the rush and the necessary strength to go on. It eventually helped build my confidence. Let's face it, at some point, my emotions could have overtaken me completely. It can easily define us or limit us our potential. My self-doubt would have paralyzed me. Instead, I focused on my attention and what I wanted to accomplish. Then I got pregnant with my first child. The focus suddenly was divided into motherhood and our career. I was lucky to have a very strong support system which allowed me to pursue both together a few months later. Before I gave birth, I in was introduced to the sunrise industry of the country, the contact center BPO. And the rest is history. It turned out walking away from the global telecommunications company would start my IT BPM career. But during the time when I was starting my career in the BPO, there was also a challenge or something happened also in my life. You know, when I gave birth, to my second baby, I almost died. I was 21 days in coma. I was 28 days in and out of coma. And in the ICU, I had a tracheostomy. And I thought I would give up. But one day, when I woke up, when I saw my husband posted pictures of our babies playing religious songs, I thought to myself, this should not be the end. This should just be the start of a beautiful journey that I will have with my family. And so I lived. So I'm Casper now. I'm in front of you. Okay, so um, according to the Cardinal Santos doctors, I'm actually a miracle mom. So because... I was given a 30-70 chance of survival. Um, for some reason, I think I still have a purpose, and God made me live. Now, as a navigator, I joined the company in 2011. Which company is this? Infosys. Uh, BPM or Infosys Limited, and I got excited at the idea of being part of this global company. I built it, when I joined the company, it was a sub 1,000 FTEs, now we're at 5,000. Um, I'm skipping some of the portions of the book because it's very long, so I'm just uh, telling you a bit of the portions. And after a couple of years in the organization, I was invited to run for board seats in two industry associations. 
enabling the IT BPM industry. And this is where really I'm practicing being a navigator. I am grateful to the different industry leaders who gave me their vote and opportunity to serve our beloved country. I am on my third term as a board of IBPAP and now as a vice chair. And I finished my two term board in CCAP. And now I'm also a board of director in the Go P Digital Filipinas Movement under the Office of the President. So, you know, navigating within Infosys, navigating outside industry, and navigating also my life as I'm nearing retirement. Almost four years, I should be done with corporate. So hopefully, I will save enough. Last year, my role in Infosys as well got expanded. So I was appointed to be a member of the Global Leadership Council. And uh, I get to participate in problem solving, decision making, not only of the Philippine matters and Malaysia matters, but also the matters of our global organization. So my story is about exploring to learn what I didn't know, add value by building what I could, and lead by navigating to the next stage all anchored on my personal life's purpose, which I have defined in various stages of both my personal and professional life. So whatever path I choose, I have my 13-word guide as a reminder. And here it goes. With courage, grit, and purpose, one can do even Others say you can't. So with courage, greed, and purpose, one can do what others say you can. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning.